Chairman, members of the board, it's my pleasure to present to you the proposed fiscal year 2019 budget. This presentation will be an overview followed today by Sheriff Hines, Chief Pollan, and Superintendent Dr. Gill. So additional presentations are scheduled later in the month as well to give you the full flavor of the entire budget. As you can see on the screen, our total all fund budgets for this year is $463 million. Start with a budget overview. We start this budget process as we do every year with certain priorities that are consistent here to Hanover. We created a five-year balanced budget to ensure that we only take on those projects and initiatives that we can afford over the long term. We continue to support our priority areas, education, public safety, and human services. And we must maintain a quality workforce. Then we looked at the areas that were creating new challenges for us this, in this year's budget. <clears throat> Meeting the needs of our young people, including K-12, as well as older adults. There are many public safety needs. And the largest single challenge we faced during the budget process was the lack of state support for education and constitutional officers. Governor's budget proposes no funding for raises of teachers, or constitutional officer staff, leaving the full burden of rewarding these well-deserving employees on Hanover County. So let's take a look first at the constitutional officers. The Virginia Constitution mandates the establishment of five constitutional officers, and Hanover currently is spending $34.5 million to support these officers. The state is currently funding 16% of the five offices, and their support for these offices continues to decline each year. As mentioned before, with no pay raises and impractical standards for customer service, these offices are dependent <coughs> on your local support. But this isn't the biggest issue we face this year. Our biggest challenge is the declining support for public education. Let's be clear, this is not a one-year problem. The financial burden for funding education has been continually shifting downward to the localities, and it does not appear to be a result of strictly a revenue problem at the state level. Over the four-year period, state budget funding for direct aid to public education grew by 14%. That's not bad. But Hanover, over that same four-year period, saw an increase of only 3%. That's not a good statistic. Let's take a little closer look at what this meant to the salaries of our employees. We highlighted that a quality workforce is a priority to employees alike. So let's look at the last five fiscal years. When we look at what the state has funded, only two pay raises for teachers and constitutional officers. We're going to use the example of a teacher here to make it simple. Hanover has needed to step up to ensure that a modest pay raise was provided in all five years. Without air funding support, a Hanover County teacher that started in fiscal year 14 at a salary of 42000 would be making $3,000 less than they are right now, depending only on state resources for pay raises. That's a tremendous burden that's been shifted to local governments. And while this, again, is an example of only teachers, the same is true for constitutional officer staff. So we'll transition into the general fund budget. Let's start with the general fund revenues. Our general fund revenues are up 4.6% from last year. <coughs> 62% of our locally generated revenue is from taxes on real and personal property. This includes both business and, personal and residential property. Real property is expected to increase almost 4% over last fiscal year as a result of the reassessment and new construction. Our personal property is continuing to grow as a result of purchase of new cars and trucks. This year's increase is estimated to be 7.7%. <coughs> and our sales tax also remains strong at 
Other taxes and fees make up about 25% of the budget. And this includes charges for ambulance service fees, building permit fees, planning fees, and so forth. And finally, our state and federal revenue in the general fund represents funding for human services programs. These are primarily in the areas of social service and CSB. So where's the breakdown of all the expenditures? Where's the money go? Here are the major areas. 34% of our general fund expenditures support our school personnel and operations. 26% of the budget goes to fund our public safety personnel and operations. 13% is spent on capital projects and our debt service payments, and 10% goes toward human services personnel and operations. So we talked about those priorities. Let's take a little bit deeper look. We'll start with education. We're proud of what we've accomplished over the years and in this budget with our Hanover School System partners. There's an additional $3.9 million in funding for school operations, which primarily goes to fund salaries and benefit increases to school employees. There's an additional $2.6 million investment in school capital needs. Dr. Gill and I are recommending a plan to continue the investment in school technology and to fund the auditorium renovation projects, which have been designated a priority. Dr. Gill will be here later this afternoon to detail, in more, to in detail more information for you on these items. And next area to be discussed, public safety. Responding to the public safety needs of Hanover <coughs> citizens is a priority and staffing is the number one challenge for all of these agencies. This budget fully funds the sheriff's request for operations and additional positions. The, stir, the sheriff's presentation later today will demonstrate these needs in greater detail. Likewise, the fire and EMS department has been working very hard to meet the growing needs for additional coverage in many areas of the county. This year we received a letter from Black Creek Fire Department asking us to expand our support to 24-7 for their department. We're proposing five new staff positions to accomplish this request. Chief Pollan is prepared to speak to you later today as well. And when we've added additional field personnel and new initiatives such as body cameras, <coughs> it has an impact on emergency communications and the Commonwealth's attorney, who are vital to the frontline responders. Therefore, we've increased We've added additional positions to the public safety budgets for those departments as well. Now let's talk about human services. Support for human services increases 1.9 million in this budget. About 1.2 million of this is due to the increased cost of the Children's Services Act program, primarily due to the increase in special education students placed in private day centers that Mr. Taylor described just last month. We've also added a part-time senior services specialist to provide a dedicated resource for focusing on issues that are impacting our seniors. Other human service initiatives funded in this budget are intended to address the impacts of the opioid addiction crisis. These include an expanded drug recovery program at our Pamunkey Regional Jail and the continued support for the adult drug treatment court pilot program that you're well aware of. Our workforce. Maintaining a quality workforce is a priority for us. Despite the state impacts we discussed earlier, I am proposing a 2% merit increase to recognize employee performance and maintain competitiveness for all county and school positions. I would like to take this opportunity to offer special recognition for two people who are pictured on the screen. A few minutes ago, Mr. Davis presented a resolution honoring Linda Vitek. Linda retired on January the 31st, as you heard, with 43 years of service. But also, Christine Tillman, pictured in the upper left of the picture, began working in social services in 1976. So she does fit your time frame, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Over the decades, she has worked in many capacities for the Department of Social Services, and she will be retiring tomorrow with 42 years of service. These 
are but two examples of the very many dedicated employees who are providing outstanding customer service to our citizens every day. And we must take care of maintaining the quality of our workforce. Let's transition to our CIP. We have a $39.2 million capital improvement program for the fiscal year. The single largest capital project is the new Atlee Library, which will replace our storefront location and be our biggest library upon completion next year. Construction of the Atlee Library is proposed as a board initiative for FY19, along with the courts building renovations and the school technology program. Additionally, we are proposing a new park in Coal Harbor area, which is planned to include multi-purpose fields, a playground, trails, and a picnic pavilion. We worked steadily on enhancing our parks over the last several years, but this will be our first new park since the Washington Lacey Park of 2008. We believe this new park will be a great enhancement to our recreational opportunities for families and athletic leagues from around the county. And then, in conclusion, this budget is measured in what we were able to accomplish given some daunting challenges. We funded our priorities, we faced our challenges, and are proud to have accomplished this without, let me emphasize, without raising any of our property tax rates. As always, this took a partnership with many others that contributed greatly to its success. I want to thank the budget staff and the county and school leaders for their hard work and cooperation throughout this process. Mr. Chairman, this can include my overview. I would be glad to answer any questions you have now, or we can proceed to Sheriff Hines' presentation. It is the board's pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Are there any comments or questions of Mr. Harris on the county administrator's proposed budget? Very well, Mr. Harris, thank you for being with us. As we know, we'll have a whole month to discuss these many items. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is presentation.